The APRS in-car map display, near final setup. By Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters or PMR 446. Hello, uh, welcome back to the channel again. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or if you catch me on 11 meters or PMR 446, 26 Charlie Tango 730. Uh, before I begin, uh, I can't do 10 or 11 metres mobile at the moment because I've had to return that antenna back to the the, the, the amateur I was loaning it off because he required the mag mount back for his uh, ATAS. But we'll cover that in a, in a different topic. So as you can see there, behind us there's a control panel for the FTM 400. Uh, the actual FTM 400 base unit itself is actually on the floor of the car because it was stuck on with Sugru, but uh, my trips in the summer out to Germany and France, uh, it was quite hot and I think that might have weakened the Sugru and uh, yeah, it fell off. Uh, got the GPS receiver on the top of the dash there, stuck on with blue tack. It's That's not its permanent location, but you know, it will be put in a more permanent location later on. So I don't really want it where it is right now, because it's quite close proximity to the airbag. Uh, and over here we've got the High 10 Air tablet on its actually now in on its installed on its mount. Uh, I've got USB hub there. It's just some paperwork on the seat here. I might want to move just so that um, you don't find out where I work because I don't because there's people on the internet that would love to know where I work just so they can screw me over. Okay, so there's USB hub there. There's the speaker for the um. Uh, I think there's some paintwork on the floor that might give away my, my work as well, so I'll just grab that. Yeah, there we go. That should be fine. Um, yeah, so we've got the um, uh, USB hub there. Connected to that is the FTM 400 and my mobile phone, which is just under here because I'm having to use USB tethering. Because for whatever reason, APRS ISC32 likes to crash the, the Wi Fi stack. I don't know why. But it's just that's just a recent development. It has never done that before. So I've got the speaker, the external speaker for the FTM 400. Yeah, that's just received a packet there, and another one. Don't think it's received those direct. I think they've come from somewhere else, so it won't show as direct as her directly. So we've got the map just there, as you can see. So it's zoomed quite a way out at the moment so it shouldn't give much of an idea as to my current location although I am actually beaconing right now over over the IS using the tablet the tablet is charged using USB-C cable which is plugged into into um, a, a should be plugged into a three-way splitter plugged in with, with a charger plugged into it so just have to dig that out because for whatever reason every, all the wires are falling into the passenger full well I haven't quite arranged that. They're there to finish off, so this goes in one or one way or another. Sometimes it just doesn't like to charge. So there we go. But sometimes it's fine charging. It's just I think it just over, just either overloads the charger or just doesn't like when you plug the USB cable in certain ways. Just got to be careful. Don't knock that top USB cable out because that one is in fact for the. Cause there's two cables there. That's the on the go cable, which is going to the hub. And you can see I put a ferrite bead on that just to try and cut the RF noise down and this one is obviously just to charge the tablet up while we're moving so that's basically everything coming at the moment uh, APRS IS T32 the speed um, that heading I don't think that heading's quite right because I'm not actually facing north the car's actually facing kind of in a southerly direction if, uh, if I've got if I've worked it out properly so so what I'm going to do with this is I've popped it in and I've got to go and visit um, a, a local branch of the discount supermarket Lidl because there's a couple of bits and pieces I need and I'm not paying too much for them. So that's one thing I'm going to start now. So one thing I need to test is to see how well this handles the car starting. Right, so the radio's reset. Has the tablet's charger come up? Mm, yeah, the tablet's char the tablet's charger is actually overloading, despite the fact it's designed for three to put three amps out. So the way around that usually is just to plug it in and see if it. No, it's the charger's still over. It's, the charger's still in overload. Yeah, that's annoying because it it'll try and start up, but then it'll stop again and it'll try and start up again. It's weird. 
I plug the cable in that way, it's having no effect. That's actually quicker than it would on the mains charger. No, it's, the charger's just overloaded. Ah, that's annoying. Yeah, because I've reset the, the charger, but I'm going to have to reset the charger again, I think. <coughs> i reset the charger now, it should, no, it hasn't, it hasn't fixed it. It's like it's detecting too much load. If I try again. No, it's detecting too much. It's like the charger's overloaded. So if I turn the screen off, yeah, let's just lock the screen. Yeah, there's a problem with a, with with every charger I plug into this tablet. That it doesn't seem to want to start up the charger properly. It just just doesn't want to do it. No matter what I try. The only charger that works properly with it that I know of is the charger that was supplied with it. So I think there's an overload there because that's just flashing on and off and it's just recycling the charger. Uh, two minutes while I just try and sort that out. Right, okay, that was um, uh, that was a bit annoying. So what, what, what I've done was I've just unplugged the charger and plugged it back in like I was doing and it's just now working fine. So what should happen when I'm moving along is that zero there should display my speed in miles per hour um, because that's uh, what we use in the UK miles an hour um, hopefully if this is set right this should be set to follow me yes it is set to follow so I'll just oop. Let's put me okay just touching the screen's a bit annoying let's see set to follow okay right Okay, so, just waiting to see what see what happens when I start moving around. It's receiving stuff. What I'm going to do when I get to the Littles, I'm going to do a little test with the FT2D and just show you how it gates. So, I'll catch you when I get there. Okay, so that's the tablet there. I've reached Lidl. So, that means I can now do the little experiment I wanted to try. So. It involves APRS.fi, which if I go into there, it's just being awkward, there we go. It shows, it shows my position on there already, but here's what I wanted to do. To see whether this, because I don't seem to have received anything local directly going into the, going into the, into the thing. So what I'm going to do is... Turn on my FT2D. I'm going to just move that off there because you don't want to be seeing the password to my FT2D. It's not something I want the whole internet knowing because I've got a password on it. So I'm still receiving things. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in. I've got a test beacon set up on this already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send that test beacon and see if this thing actually gates, like I hope it does. So in order for me to check that, beacon t transmit. Okay, so it's picked it up on that screen there and it's picked it up on there. That's just clicked off now. So let's see if it's picked it up on APRS.fi. Okay. I need to zoom. Oh, apparently it has actually. So I should be able to press info. And there you go. And it shows the path. So it's gone into the system and it should have come back out of the system somewhere else. The other eye gates and digis. So that's actually pretty good. So, it should, so if I go into the nine beacon. It should, if I scroll down, say that. Oh, it didn't actually. Because although I actually did, it did hear directly on on the radio path. So if I go into that again, it hasn't actually updated to show that, but you know. It has gone in because I can see it on both these on this screen here. Although it's saying it's about twenty yards away. But it has gone through. So that's a good way of testing that. So the gating function does actually work. It does it does gate. 
So that's impressive. So it actually is doing what I hoped it would do. Obviously it doesn't transmit back because it's all, it's all one way, which was explained in the previous video, which I'll also put a link to. So, in the previous video there's instructions on how to get this working. There's also instructions on how to get this working by an American station as well, using a slightly older setup and some parts that we don't have. So, basically, that's all there is to it. it. It just sits there in your car as you're driving along. If there's other amateurs beaconing, it'll be... It'll act as like a, a receive-only eye gate, because for whatever reason the FTM 400 doesn't do both bi-directional on that setup. But that's uh, not a major problem. So I've got the FTM 400 in the car. I've got this tablet in the car on this mount, which is an Archon mount. Um, I can't remember the exact model number. It's held in with three screws at the moment. It's supposed to be held in with four, but I haven't put the fourth screw in yet. So I'm now actually at my destination, so I will wish you 7-3. Um, and I'm going to just end on a slightly different note, because if, if you want to, you can catch me on the air, either on if on the GB3 IR repeater, um, uh, which is uh, on IRLP and Echolink. Um, sometimes I might be listening to GB3 HG as well. I sometimes listen to the calling channel, but it's rare. And... You can also catch me on the network radios. Uh, I tend to monitor channel zero zero on network radios. If I'm if I'm there, um, I'm usually logged in under my intermediate call sign, but I will generally respond with my um, uh, current call sign, which is Mike Zero Whiskey November Uniform. So, yeah, I'm happy with all this. It works, and. All it leaves me to do now is wish you 7-3 and, and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Because so I've got things to do now. So, it's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, wishing you 7-3 and enjoy your radio. And I and, uh, hope to catch you on the air very soon. Or even on the network radio. So I do have the network radio in the car sometimes. Seven three. Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to be notified of new videos as I upload them. Seventy three is from Paul Mike Zero Whiskey November Uniform, or two six Charlie Tango seven three zero on eleven meters and PMR four four six.